Well, the pessimism in the housing market continues to grow. So what's going to happen for the remainder of 2022? Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Shane Shea. And today we're going to jump into an article from Housing Wire talking about the pessimism as it relates to home buyers in this current market. Now, if you're a home buyer, I'm sure you can relate to what's going on with the pessimism, not only in your neck of the woods, but all over the country. We're experiencing a lot of buyers who are pessimistic for various reasons, similar reasons that we've seen in the first part of 2022, high interest rates, high home prices, although we have seen several price reductions and a lot of home builders are also reducing their price. So what's going on with all the pessimism and when do we see an end in sight for this pessimism? Let's jump into the article. According to the article, home prices have started to drop, but the decline has not been significant enough to slow a growing pessimism about the housing market. Fannie Mae's Home Purchase Sentiment Index, which tracks the housing market and consumer confidence to sell or buy a home dropped by 0.8 points in August to 62, marking its sixth consecutive decline. The government-sponsored enterprises, also known as a GSE, attributed high home prices and mortgage rates to the decline, particularly weighing on home selling sentiment. Year over year, the index is down 13.7 points. Also, according to this index, 35% of sellers say that it's a bad time to sell. That is up from 27% just in July. So as we can see, sellers are also becoming pessimistic. It's not just buyers. On the buy side, opportunities are definitely showing up more and more as we progress into the end of the year. This is typically the time where we see a slowdown anyway, as kids go back to school and we hit into the first part of fall, which is right around the corner. Also, according to the index, 59% of sellers said that it's actually a good time to sell. However, that's down from 67% the previous month. Following a slowdown in home price appreciation, prices slipped 0.77% in July from June, marking the largest single month decline in the housing market since January 2011. That's according to Black Knight. About 85% of major housing markets, mainly on the West Coast, saw prices pull back from their peak levels and more price corrections are expected across the U.S. Now, I'm curious to know, where are you located and what type of price cuts are you seeing where you're located? Let me know in the comments below. So as we see these price decreases, this is good news, especially for first time home buyers who are the ones that are disproportionately affected by higher home prices as well as these high mortgage rates. So again, first time home buyers are the ones affected most by this. But overall, even if you're not a first time home buyer, we know that everyone's affected by higher interest rates. So as these interest rates continue to rise and we've seen them back and forth from, you know, the mid five to low fives right back up in the last week or so to high fives and 6% rate. So we understand that that buying power is being affected every time these interest rates go up. So of course, home buyers are going to welcome the price cuts. However, as these interest rates continue to fluctuate and go higher, it's still adding more and more to the pessimism that we're seeing in the market today. Overall, 22 of respondents said it was a good time to buy in August. That's up from 17% a month prior, but 73% said it was a bad time to buy, which is down from 76% in July. So in addition to all of this, most consumers are very much not optimistic about mortgage rates either. About 11% of respondents said that they expect interest rates to go down in the next 12 months, whereas 61% expect interest rates to go up in the next 12 months. Where do you sit on this? According to the article, mortgage rates have been on a rising trend in recent weeks ahead of another potential rate hike by the Federal Reserve later this month. Purchase mortgage rates rose to an average of 5.89% this past week. So we are expecting for the Fed to raise rates again in the next week or two, the next time they meet. That is the expectation. And that is going to have an impact on interest rates as well. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But according to Jerome Powell, he is going to continue to fight inflation. And the best way he can do it on the mortgage and real estate side is to continue to raise 
interest rates unfortunately that's just where we are right now until we get to the other side again landing this plane it's going to be a bumpy landing until we get to the other side but we will get to the other side so again i want to hear back from you give me some feedback let me know what's going on in your neck of the woods and if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel hit that like button and remember don't just make a move make a power move i'll see you guys on the next video go check it out